of a pastor. We have three lines open at 270-9933. But first, a new study suggests more parents are requesting to delay their children's vaccines or refusing to vaccinate them altogether. It jumped 12% between 2006 and 2013. Dr. Zorba Pastor joins us from his clinic in Oregon. Good to see you again, Dr. Hi, Zorba. Good to see you guys. So what's the study telling us? Well, the study is telling us that a lot of people are looking at the net and getting misinformation from the net, <clears throat> leaving it and putting their children at danger. And there is no doubt about it. Uh, if you look, for instance, at chicken pox, chicken pox, I've had it, you guys had it. It's not a pleasant disease. And if you have chicken pox, many years later when you're an adult, you can get her, uh, post herpetic neuralgia from shingles. Better to get the injection for that. Measles, you want to get the injection. When it comes to meningitis, you want to get the injection. When I first started practice, there was lots of meningitis. Now we don't see it anymore. But there was a guy who had a study out, which turned out to be completely refuted. His doctor degree was taken away from him. This is an English guy who basically did it for the money because he makes a lot of money lecturing about how measles, mumps, and German measles vaccine will cause autism. And it is a fake. The study is a fake. It was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, and then the journal totally removed it from there. But you know what? The web has echoes to it that last and last and last. I think that children should be immunized, that it saves lives, and I think that people who don't immunize their children should absolutely not you know, I mean, they should do it. And in California, they recently passed a law that said if you don't immunize your children, you have to come in and actually discuss it with a doctor. And if not, your kids don't get to go to school. So I think that's what we have to do. We Guess what state has the highest rate of immunization of children? Can you guess? Um, Us. Wisconsin. Mississippi. <laughs> Mississippi. Really? That's Mississippi because they do not any because they hardly allow any people unless there's a doctor's excuse because they can't do it. Mississippi has a 98 to 99 percent immunization rate because they do not accept the fact the parent just doesn't want to do it. Right. Very uh, they lead the crowd. All right, let's they get to the phones. We've got lots of questions. We'll start with Kathy in Madison. Hi, Kathy. Hi. What's your question? When I move my head up and down or from side to side, Sometimes I hear a loud cracking sound, and I don't know if it's coming like from inside my head or my neck area. Um, mm -hmm. And I hear a lot of times some grinding in my neck too when I move my head around. Sure. How how old are you? Um, in my late fifties. In your late fifties. So any injuries, athletic injuries no. that you may have had in the past? No, none at all. No. Yeah. But usually when you have grinding in your neck, it's often due to arthritis. It often doesn't mean that there's anything serious going on, except for the fact that you've got this grinding and it can be uncomfortable. One of the things you want to do is talk to your physician about it. Go to a physical therapist. You'll need a doctor's reason to actually go and do it. I recommend chiropractic for the low back, but I do not recommend chiropractic for the neck. I think there's always an element of danger there unless your doctor says that it's safe. All right. All right. Thank you for calling. Let's go to Betty in Madison. Hi, Betty. What's your question? Hi. Um, I was just wondering what causes the rather severe leg cramps. Oh. We, a long time ago, used to call them Charlie horses mm -hmm. and, and how to treat them. My husband gets them really bad. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we still we still call them Charlie horses. I have no <laughs> idea where that actually where that actually came from. Uh, one of the things you can do is leg stretching exercises for the Achilles tendon. So if you look at the web, the Achilles tendon stretching exercises. Go to YouTube. My son calls it YouTube U. YouTube University. Go to YouTube. Put down Achilles stretching. That can make a big difference. And believe it or not, warm milk worked years ago, and it works today. A little warm milk before you go to sleep will often cure those Charlie horses and you will sleep better. Interesting. Right. Warm milk. That's easy enough. Warm milk. All right, warm Doris milk. in Madison, you're next. Hi, Doris. Hello, doctor. Uh, my question is very similar to the previous one. I have leg cramps often in the summertime and I'm told that quinine, I take con tonic water with quinine to help prevent mm -hmm. leg cramps. Well, Why that was an old, that was, well, it was an old remedy. If you want to buy quinine, you actually have to go to Canada or you have to get it from a <laughs> Canadian pharmacy. And the reason is, and the reason is, studies have shown that quinine, double-blind, placebo-controlled trials, showed that quinine didn't do anything. So the medication on the market that used to be called Quinom, 
which was a quinine tablet, went out. So if tonic water works for you, I would continue with it. I find it a little bitter, but uh, some people say it works for them. So by all means, it's sort of an old-fashioned remedy that might work for you. A little vodka in there helps, too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, George, we're out of time. I didn't say that. I left that for you, Mark. Thanks, for everyone, for calling in. We'll see you next time. Thank you, Zorba. Thanks Take for calling, care. everybody. Stay well. <laughs>